Hello and welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you were watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I've got some more updates coming out from the Kursk region of Russia to share with you with this ongoing offensive from the Ukrainians pushing into Russian territory. So I've got several things I want to share with you here today. One of the biggest news that we have coming out from the Kursk region is Ukraine has successfully destroyed a second bridge west of where the primary operations are taking place in the Kursk region. There's an area roughly about close to 700 square kilometers of Russian territory the, the Ukrainians are trying to take over right now. So they're trying to blow these bridges to this region that is basically the only way that Russia can move troops and equipment into. And we've got this video footage that came out yesterday uh, soon after we finished our daily updates regarding the Kursk region yesterday, this video footage came out on X and uh, showed the Ukrainians destroying that second bridge. This is in the town of Zvonoy or Zvano. I don't know how they pronounce it. Uh, I call it Zvano. Uh, but uh, yeah, we've got two bridges now that have been destroyed. The third one has not been destroyed yet. Uh, it's more west of where uh, Zvano is at. But uh, it is a smaller bridge, I might add, okay? It's not as big of a bridge as these other two that have been hit in the last couple days. The other one in Glushkovo, we covered that uh, just yesterday and the day before coming under attack and being destroyed. So two main bridges now to this area are gone. Now it's going to force the uh, Russians to either retreat or do they do they hold their ground and fight till the end? Are they going to surrender? What's going to happen here? Because the Ukrainians are getting very close. I've got some reports here that they might be just something like 10 kilometers away from Glushkovo, which is one of the first towns and where that bridge got originally struck. Uh, the Ukrainians are getting very close to that. So I've got uh, several things I want to go over here with you today. We'll talk a little bit about Belarus as well. I've got some updates coming out from Belarus, and I've got uh, various things coming out from the Kursk region to share with you. Also, Kiev came under attack yesterday as well from uh, some cruise missiles fired from Russia. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and jump on into the news so I can start sharing some of this information with you. First, we're going to talk about these this bridge that's come under attack in uh, Zvano. So Bliskovka reports, the Ukrainian armed forces have damaged a bridge over the same river in the Kursk region, local channels report. This is the second structure destroyed by Ukrainian soldiers the day before they attacked a crossing near the village of Glushkovo. Okay, so that was that other bridge that got destroyed. Now the uh, bridge here in Zvano or Zvonoi, has been destroyed as well. Okay, so we had that video footage. Now we've got this picture coming out as well. I also had this on the thumbnail for you guys so you could see a major hole here in the, in the middle of this bridge. So the Russians are not going to be able to use this bridge anymore, okay? It's going to be very difficult for them to bring any kinds of uh, weapons or supplies, tanks, anything like that. Any large equipment is not going to be able to go through this bridge anymore. It's probably even too unsafe to even travel over it. So uh, very big news here. So that's that photo for you. And we've also got this map pulled up from Bliskovka as well to show where this attack took place. So this is the town of Zvano down here. And just to the north on the same river, that's where this bridge got hit. Okay, so right there. So definitely a key bridge. That's going to make it very difficult now for any of the Russians to continuously resupply, refuel their troops that are in this region. And, uh, you know, what are they going to do now? They're essentially cut off here and they're not going to be able to get out. Okay, so... Uh, very big problem for the Russians, and, and we're, we're hearing that there's potentially thousands of uh, Russian troops in these regions, okay, in Glushkovo, in Zvano, and also Kariz. Uh, there's potentially thousands of them that are going to be trapped here, and they're not going to be able to get out. So what is Russia going to do to evacuate either these troops and get them out of there? Or are they going to fight till the end? I'm not sure what's going to happen yet. Uh, you, you guys probably have my best guess for me. Let me know what you think down below, what the Russians will do here. But now that this bridge is blown up, they're definitely going to be stuck in a pickle here. So let's go ahead and keep moving on. Also, uh, coming out from Nexta, Apana Savka, Kursk region is no longer under the Russian flag. It has already been torn down by Ukrainian soldiers of the 501st Separate Marine Battalion. So we got a 13-second video of the Ukrainians taking down a, uh, a flag here in Apana Savka. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. На на
Фрата честно ми доходит. Ну да, и So we've definitely been seeing a lot of this lately. There's been lots of video footage coming out all over X showing multiple settlements in the Kursk region with Ukrainians tearing down all of their all of the Russian uh, uh, flags. Also, we had that Lenin statue that was taken down in the uh, town of Sutsa, and that is the uh, now a Ukrainian stronghold where I believe they are setting up a military command post as well in that town. So as we can see, another flag going down. Ukrainian flag going up and we've got this uh, this photo here as well to kind of show you where this is at so uh, just to the the east over here is where a lot of the uh, the land has already been taken by the Ukrainians under under Ukrainian control here's Glushkovo right here okay so look it's really not that far away uh, this is the the region over here getting to be the beginning of it where that 700 square kilometers of uh, cursed territory I've been telling you guys that uh, is currently being contested right now. So they're really getting close to uh, Glushkovo where that first bridge was blown up over here. So that's why I wanted you guys to see this. They are really not that far away, okay? Something like 10 kilometers or less uh, until they start reaching the town of Glushkovo, which again, you know, once they start to push into this region, many of these Russian troops are cut off. Um, as far as I know, they have not left or evacuated yet. So it's definitely going to be a major battle that will probably take place for a while. Um, and at some point, we'll see if the Ukrainians can take it over and if they're able to uh, take over this entire region with that 700 square kilometers of land. Uh, this could essentially put them upwards of 2,000 square kilometers in total uh, gained territory here in the Kursk region. So let's go ahead and keep moving here. I've got this other map to show you as well. So as we can see, uh, here's uh, Aponosovka, that other town that was taken over. So just from Glushkovo to uh, Kamar Kamarovka, I think is how you say it, Kamarovka. This is another town that's being contested, potentially under control almost by the Ukrainians. And just from there to here, roughly about 10, 10 kilometers, okay? So really not that far away. Here's these other towns here. This is Vano. And then I believe this town here, it's not labeled, but I think this is Kariz right here, okay? So two other uh, major bridges. This one's been destroyed as Vano. And then also this bridge over here by Glushkovo, completely gone as well okay so there's one last bridge over here in Kariz that needs to be destroyed once that gets destroyed the Ukrainians can essentially start to take over majority of this area which they're starting to do that right now so look at how close they're getting to this region okay and then we also heard I reported to you guys the other day down here in Tetkino this town is virtually unguarded okay the Russians are not even here in this town they're actually uh, to the northwest up here beyond the same river which is runs right here okay they're actually beyond that over here and that's what i think these red uh, little arrows are is that's where the russians are at firing from back here to protect tetkino so they're not actually even stationed here in this town and obviously it's so close to the ukrainian border so that's probably also why they're kind of giving it up uh but definitely some major updates here okay the ukrainians are pushing very fast we can see here They've got full control over Korneva. We talked about that yesterday as well. They are continuously advancing northwest up here, taking over more settlements. And we're hearing today they've taken over uh, even more settlements. I'll talk about that here in just a minute. Also, so let's go ahead and jump on over here to uh, Bandera Fela. Kursk Front, the Russian collapse is accelerating. Run for your life. Katsap. In just 24 hours, six more settlements have fallen. Ukrainian forces are ripping through Russian defenses, cutting off your reinforcements and taking control of town after town. Your key supply routes are shattered. Your bridges over the same river are gone. And thousands of your troops are now trapped like rats in the Glushkovo district. Okay, so that's kind of what we've been talking about. And as we can see here, Bandera Fela is definitely a major supporter of Ukraine. So that's why he's speaking very provocatively like this, very aggressive. Uh, the options are simple, surrender or be wiped out. The only chance your soldiers have is to give up their positions and hope for mercy. But make no mistake, every hour you wait only tightens the noose around your neck. The territory we control in Russia is expanded to 1,500 square kilometers. Now that's what he's reporting here. Last I heard, they had something around 1,100, uh, close to 1,200. So that may have gone up. We have been hearing uh, that they've been taking over lots of territories or lots of uh, settlements, excuse me, like Kornovo down here on this map so it's but it's very uh possible that they could be upwards of 1500 square kilometers or or uh, higher but we haven't had official confirmation yet from uh Oleksandr Sersky maybe we'll get that update here in the next couple of days and he says and it's about to grow even more when Glushkova falls 
Russian forces are fleeing from Tiotkino, which is down here. And soon the uh, entire district will be in Ukrainian hands. Another 150 of your comrades were captured in just one day, adding to our growing exchange fund. Your talk of Ukrainian slowdowns and retreats is laughable. We're advancing and you're losing ground, men, and hope with every passing hour. This is the end game. Choose wisely or we'll choose for, uh, for you. Slava Ukraini. So there's this map that was uh, released here. This is Suza, the Ukrainian stronghold that has been taken over. And look at how much they're starting to push here. This is Kornovo over here. Here's that region under this blue line that is being contested right now that the Ukrainians are starting to push into. I also noticed on this map, it's showing uh, the Ukrainians that they might start, uh, start pushing in as well over here to the uh, western side of where majority of the fighting is taking place. Um, I haven't been able to confirm that. I haven't heard any reports of this, but it's very possible that the Ukrainians could start pushing in those areas as well. Maybe uh, a few brigades could be uh, in those regions trying to push in. But definitely the Ukrainians are pushing very fast. And also something to note, look at how close they're getting to Kerchatov, okay? Kerchatov is where that nuclear power plant is at. That's being uh, contested right now. We know the Ukrainians might at some point try to take that over. And look at how close they're getting to Kursk too as well because... I just showed you guys a video just recently, uh, maybe about uh, three to four days ago, of the town of Kursk that they could literally hear explosions you know, in the distance. That's how close the Ukrainians are getting to the uh, city of Kursk, okay? Not the Kursk Oblast, but the actual city of Kursk right here. So pretty crazy, guys. I mean, they are pushing wildly fast, and this whole thing over here is collapsing uh, insanely quick. And uh, right now, I think... I last heard that Vladimir Putin is over visiting Azerbaijan right now, so I don't know why he's going anywhere when he has an invasion of his country happening right now. Pretty crazy. I don't know if he's going to go over and try to get some support or what's going on. I'm going to try to find out about that. But if your country is being invaded, why are, you, why are you traveling around to other countries right now? That's just absolutely insane to me. I don't understand that. But let's go ahead and keep moving, guys. I've got a few videos I want to show with you today as well from Igor Sushko. Cursed liberation. Russians left behind their dogs on chains. Note the the house is in t uh, the intact house. Excuse me. Ukrainian soldiers are now feeding and caring for these dogs. So I understand this is just a video about dogs, but think about this. You know, most people probably don't even pay attention to this type of stuff, but this kind of shows that the Ukrainians they do have a heart. Okay, they care about the dogs that are even left behind here. Because imagine many people just fled. They had to get out immediately. And they're probably thinking, shoot, you know, if I go somewhere, I can't even take care of my dog. You know, many, many people that live in the United States, you might be dog lovers. And, um, it, you know, it's kind of sad to think about that all these pets are being left behind, uh, chained up. And who's going to take care of them? Or, you know, they're just going to starve to death if, if nobody uh, helps them out. And the Ukrainians are literally walking around giving food to the dogs and, and taking care of them in the meantime until the situation gets under control. So take a look at this real quick. It's a minute and a half. Hello. <laughs> Alright, so definitely uh, kind of sad to see that, right? I mean, uh, even me personally, I'm actually a dog lover myself. I had a dog recently uh, that passed away back in May. I had him for 15 years, okay? He was definitely an old man and he was starting to fall apart and fortunately he got sick and passed away. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, it's it's definitely uh, it's disheartening to see this, right? Because obviously these dogs are being left behind. But at the same time, at least the Ukrainians are trying to do something to take care of them, you know, because they obviously don't have owners anymore. So they've been abandoned in a lot of ways and they're still chained up here, as we can see. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys to let you know what the Ukrainians are doing over here. At least they're trying to care for the dogs that are left over. I understand this is not, you know, battlefield content with explosions and things going off, but it's important to note that at least at the end of the day, the Ukrainians have a good heart to help out the dogs that are left over. Okay, so also now let's go ahead and move on to Belarus for a moment. Let's talk about this, okay, from next up. <clears throat> Lukashenko gave another delusional interview to Russian propagandists. The degree of absurdity in his statements is off the scale. Kiev has formed a powerful force with the participation of mercenaries, Poles, to attack the Kursk region, claims the uh, Belarusian dictator. According to him, this is allegedly Kiev's attempt to force Russia to use weapons, including nuclear weapons. Lukashenko uh, said the Ukra uh, that Ukraine has allegedly deployed more than 120,000 troops near the border with Belarus. I'm not joking about that. That's very serious. He claimed that Ukrainian drones were constantly violating the Belarusian border in the east of the country. But in his opinion, the goals of this special military operation have been achieved because Ukraine, he said, is denazified and 70% of its inhabitants hate Zelensky. So what exactly is uh, Alexander Lukashenko doing here? Okay, he's been saying lots of crazy things lately. Um, and, uh, you know, for example, like saying there's 120,000 troops near the border. Uh, I, I, I can't completely verify that. I don't see why Ukraine would even do that. Um, are they planning to invade, invade Belarus? I have no idea. I haven't seen any indication that they would try to do that. But that's what he's claiming here, okay? He, he's claiming that 120,000 Ukrainian troops are on the border, potentially getting ready to invade, or what's going to happen here. Um, and uh, it's just something huge that he's been mentioning. And, and we know that just recently he came out the other day and said that if they were to come under attack, they would use nuclear weapons, uh, potentially these tactical nukes that are being stationed in their country from Russia right now. So I don't know what's going on over here with Belarus, but they're acting very strange lately. And many people are saying that they're lying, that they're making these things up. Ukraine was coming out and saying that they saw no, no uh, visual uh, proof that um, the even the Belarusians were building up forces on their border because that was mentioned just a few days ago as well from Lukashenko that they were sending troops to their border. But then soon after that, they started transferring military equipment over to Russia. So I don't know if that was a cover to, uh, you know, basically start sending military equipment over to Russia, but they were kind of pretending as if they were sending it to their border. So I don't know what's going on here, but I've got a couple other things to show you regarding that. From next to uh, Lukashenko, Kiev may pr uh, try to provoke Moscow to use nuclear weapons. The dictator also said that the West could openly enter the war in Ukraine. NATO troops will enter in straight lines. Okay, so uh, obviously... This whole this whole invasion of the Kursk region is is very dangerous, and we expected this to be a major red line for Vladimir Putin, and it appears not to be. Okay, and I've been talking a lot about this lately. Um, I was almost very very worried in the beginning, to be honest, that maybe Russia may have started using tactical nukes to stop this offensive in the Kursk region, and obviously they weren't able to evacuate their citizens yet, so that wouldn't make any sense, right? But uh, then they started evacuating them very quickly, and there was emergency orders to get people out as soon as possible from multiple regions of Kursk. So I thought maybe they were going to drop a, a tactical nuke on their own territory. But I've been kind of discussing that with some of you guys down in the comment section. And, um, you know, it doesn't look likely that that'd be the case, but who knows over here what's going to happen. But that's something that Alexander Lukashenko repeatedly keeps, <clears throat> excuse me, keeps uh, reiterating this over and over, stating that, uh, that, you know, obviously NATO troops are starting to enter into uh, Russian territory and, they, you know, they may use nuclear weapons or uh, Ukraine is trying to provoke them into using them or uh, just very crazy, guys, very crazy talk. So let's go ahead and keep moving here. Take a look at this as well regarding the same scenario from Bliskovka. Lukashenko's statements about reinforcing the Belarusian border with a third of troops of the troops are lies. We are not observing an increase in the equipment or military units of Belarus near our border, said Andriy Demchenko, the spokesman of the State Border Service of Ukraine. Okay, so their border service uh, spokesman saying that they're not seeing any increase in military units on the border with Ukraine. Okay, they're not seeing any indication that Belarus is doing this, and they're saying that it's basically a lie. 
but uh, we heard from uh, Belarus that they have moved about a third of their troops and equipment of their entire country, right, over to the border of Ukraine to potentially either defend themselves or attack Ukraine if need be, or what's going on here. Uh, is this a lie? Is it not a lie? Definitely a very strange situation when it comes to Belarus right now, um, and we don't really know what their next move is going to be. But uh, it definitely seems in some ways, too, hypothetically speaking, that it's very possible even Belarus could get involved into this war. Now, I don't think they would do that, but uh, could it happen? Who knows? You guys let me know what you think down below. So let's go ahead and keep moving here from next. Uh, Kiev was attacked with missiles in the early hours Excuse me. Early hours of the morning, North Korean KN-23 ballistic missiles were fi uh, used first, followed by Iskander K cruise missiles. Preliminarily, there are no casualties or damage in Kiev. All targets were shot down by air defenses. So we did hear about this, that uh, Ukraine came under attack in Kiev with uh, ballistic missiles once again. And I haven't heard any reports of any damage or anything like that, even on mainstream media. So it does look like they were able to successfully shoot these down. So just a five second quit, uh, clip here, take a look. So we can see here in the video, something definitely getting shot down in the sky over here. Probably one of these ballistic missiles being fired on a Kiev. So that's good they were able to shoot these down because, you know, we just had that report. What was that, about a month ago or so, where the Okmadit Children's Hospital came under attack by from what we understand were Russian missiles, Russian cruise missiles. I think it was the KH-101 that struck that uh, that facility of a children's hospital where uh, poor sick children were suffering from many diseases and trying to recover, and that thing came under attack by a missile. Uh, several missiles actually struck Kiev. So uh, luckily they were able to shoot these down, so that's some good news. Also from Nexta, the Sunday Times, during the offensive in the Kursk region, the AFU uses not only British tanks, but also drones. British equipment, including drones, has played a key role in Ukraine's new offensive operation, the publication says. According to a senior official, the UK will not refuse to provide its weapons to, to support Ukraine in the war against Russia. Okay, so that's Keir Starmer, the new UK prime minister, meeting with uh, Volodymyr Zelensky there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, apparently not only are their tanks rolling into the Kursk region, but they're using their drones to strike inside of Russian territory as well. OK, so, again, this is very strange to me. How come how come drones and, and, and tanks and all this NATO equipment can flow into Russia, but we're not allowed to have uh, cruise missiles flying into Russia, if even if it comes from the same country like the British Storm Shadow missiles? Um, I don't really understand the difference. I mean, it, destruction to me is destruction. And. If anything, an invasion with tanks and, and NATO troops and all that is, in my opinion, much worse than a missile flying into their country. But apparently, uh, Russia doesn't look at it like that. And we know that the West, primarily the United States right now, is holding back on letting Ukraine use any kind of NATO equipment, any NATO cruise missiles, long-range missiles that are given to them to strike inside of Russian territory. They want to go after these airfields and start destroying them. And uh, obviously, that could be a major red flag for uh, for Russia, considering that, you know, obviously their their uh, air force is very important to them, okay? And if Ukraine starts destroying all that with uh, with NATO weapons, that could be a very big problem, okay? So let's go ahead and keep moving here again. Also from Bliskovka, assault troops of the armed forces of Ukraine show the combat operation of the Silvalka flamethrower installations in the Kursk region. The losses of Russians are considerable, writes the press service of the AFU. So we've got a 29-second video here of uh, Savalka flamethrower installations being used. Now, these are basically smaller trucks. I'll show you guys a uh, an article that talks about these. I think it's the VM-8. VM uh, these are small trucks that have essentially uh, military helicopter, attack helicopter, rocket launcher systems attached to them. They're smaller rockets that they use, and they attach them to a truck uh, that were originally on a helicopter. And they fire, I think, something like 16 rockets at a time. They're smaller rockets, and they've been using these inside of the Kursk region. So I think it's very cool to see this. Take a look at this video. Ahoy! All right.
right. Hope you, hopefully you guys like that one. So yeah, uh, I want to talk some more about these. I've got this pulled up here actually on this article. This is originally from a defense blog. This came out in December 2022 and it says Ukraine develops light rocket launcher. Okay, and this is a picture of it right here. So this is originally uh, supposed to be on like a an attack helicopter, right? But they attached it to like a, you know, a Humvee or a truck here, right? And it says here, Ukrainian engineers have developed an improvised ground-based light rocket launcher that fires S-8 aircraft rockets. The Savalka VM-8 is a 16-tube launcher using 80 millimeter S-8KO rockets typically fired by tactical aircraft and military helicopters. The new system allows you to quickly turn light wheel vehicles into mobile rocket launchers. The new system already was installed on the M1152A1 2A1 Humvee's chassis and Ford F-150 Raptor trucks. Okay, so here's another photo for you. So very innovative and interesting uh, way to create a mobile rocket launcher system, okay? And this is something else that Ukraine is starting to use in the Kursk region. So I thought I'd just share that with you. I thought that was very interesting. So let's go ahead and keep moving. Got a couple more things to share with you. Uh, so here's from Vicegrad24, Ukrainian grandmother received some bread from Ukrainian soldiers in the town of Turetsk in the Donetsk region. She is trembling and traumatized by the constant Russian shelling. Turetsk has been on the front line since the start of the war. So I wanted to show you this because imagine being in this for nearly two years, going on three years now, hearing the constant bombings going off and, you know, gunfire, explosions everywhere and having to live amongst that, you know, this poor old lady living here is uh, is trembling and, and uh, you know, getting some food from the Ukrainians. Just very sad to see this, guys. Take a look real quick. All right, so just very horrible to see this. I mean, look at how... This lady seems uh, so grateful just to receive a couple loaves of bread here. And look at just how she's trembling, okay? This is probably from the, obviously her age, she is older, but at the same time, uh, you know, she's constantly having to deal with it, with this war happening in her backyard. Uh, this is in the Donetsk region, which is probably one of the worst places to live on the entire planet right now, as uh, it's just constant war zone every single day, okay? This is where majority of the fighting is taking place. This is also where... Vladimir Zelensky had visited recently to the Donetsk region uh, when he last reported just about maybe two to three weeks before this Kursk operation was launched uh, that the Ukrainians were running out of out of troops and there was many dead and wounded on the battlefield. OK, so clearly if he's coming out from Donetsk and he's he's, uh, you know, speaking about that, then it obviously must be a bad situation over there. But then I've also discussed with you guys that maybe that was a diversionary tactic to uh, make Russia think that. Ukraine was running out of troops, and maybe they weren't. But uh, then, then again, we've been hearing a lot of the troops going into the Kursk region are NATO troops at the same time. So uh, very crazy just to see this. I just wanted to share that with you uh, to once again show the Ukrainians at least they have a heart to help people out. And uh, this is you know one side of the news that a lot of people don't even report. Most people are just reporting uh, the fighting going on and the, you know the battles taking place. But what about the poor innocent civilians that are over here having to live amongst all this? I mean, what about these people? Where's the help for them? Okay, they don't want to be a part of this. So I thought I'd share that with you guys, just to let you know what's going on. Finally, one last thing to talk about here. This came out yesterday. Igor Sushko reports Kursk offensive. Russian fascist soldiers changed into civilian clothes and hid. Cowards. The act lost them protections of the Geneva Con Convention as prisoners of war. Ukrainian forces found them anyway. So we've got video footage of some Russian soldiers that changed into civilian clothes in the Kursk region, thinking they could hide and, and uh, you know, project themselves as, as, a, uh, as a civilian and no longer a Russian, uh, Russian soldier. And it looks like the Ukrainians found them and took them and uh, captured them. So take a look. Ух, <laughs> 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 
Nu, tu, 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 All right, so pretty insane, right, uh, to see that uh, these Russian soldiers were trying to pretend as if they were civilians so they could uh, hide from the Ukrainians because they probably had nowhere to go. And to me, this is just once again more proof that this war needs to end. I mean, the, the suffering and, and everything just happening over here, the, the uh, you know, the things that, that all these people have to do to get away from this war or pretend that they're not part of it or whatnot, um, hopefully this war can end at some point. And very quickly, because uh, you know, there's just way too many people suffering over here that don't need to be suffering. I think I showed enough of that to you guys today. But I just wanted to get uh, some of these updates out here, let you know what's going on in the Kursk region. Uh, we didn't have too many updates today, unfortunately, in regards to a lot of the fighting and, and maps and stuff like that. We did have some information, but not as much as I would like. But uh, who knows, maybe here in the next couple of days, we'll start to hear some more updates in regards to this. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys got something out of today's update though. If you did, please smash that like button. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you with that. I hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless and we'll see you in the next one.